Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard Working Man. Today we're on the axis and I'm gonna try to make some bundle grade wood out of some really knotty pine. Is it gonna work? I don't know. I'm hoping maybe I can save a couple pieces out of these. Clearly, I can't make the knots go away, but if you push something like this through a multi-split wedge like we usually do when we're making our bundle wood, you're gonna end up with a big balled up mess. But we're gonna see what we can save from these rounds with the axis. And I'm going to be splitting some poplar when he's done with this because I don't want to get sap all over me. <laughs> no, we don't want to wreck this tank top. I like that shirt. And after the poplar, we got a little bit of hardwood that's sitting here. We're finally getting the wood yard cleaned up. We're making progress. We've been out running this axis a little bit off camera, just getting work in, getting used to it. Sometimes I get up and other people are busy or sleeping and I just come out here and get a little bit of work done off camera. So we're finally making progress, getting this yard the way we want it to be. That's a load of bullshit. We're making progress. We are not making progress. Yes, it's a, it's a process. So I've got totes all over right now because we got to open up the staging area and I can't drop it on the totes. But once that staging area is opened up and we're still going to do that tree to splits video. The only one who thinks you're making progress is you. No, it looks worse before they, it looks better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. So it's going to look better, I promise, because I got to get this yard in studio production shape. It will never be as long as you own it. It will be. My tractor's back. It's run flawlessly for three or four days now, knock on wood. I've got a tote here to clean up some of these scraps from when we used to split without tarps. Now we use the tarps so much easier, so much neater. You guys all with these super neat wood yards have shamed me into cleaning mine up. So I'm getting, I'm headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But before we split today, there is something I want to add to this axis. There's a couple things I want to add to it. One, I'm going to relocate that drink holder, but that's not today. But I'll show you guys what I got planned and something I think you need to add to any machine that doesn't have one. All right, when I get equipment, I like to take care of it. One thing I do is run all ethanol-free fuel in my equipment, my chainsaws, my weed whips, my log splitters, my lawnmower, my four-wheelers, all that. It costs a little bit more, but in the long run, I think you come out ahead. Another thing I like to do is on-time oil changes, greasing, all of that. I grease the axis up already. It says to do it, I believe it's every two to three hours for the first 40 hours especially. And I check the torque on these bolts, 120 foot pounds, it's a three quarter inch socket. That's all good to go. But this engine doesn't have an hour meter on it. So I picked up an hour meter. They happen to have it available in orange. This is like $12, $13 on Amazon the day I bought it. Amazon prices change. We'll put a link in the description. If you have a small engine without an hour meter on it, it's super easy to put on and it lets you know when your oil changes are due which on the all wood, it's due. We're at 47, coming up to 50, so I'll be doing another oil change on that. But I'm gonna get this thing installed real quick. I'm just gonna zip tie it here. I'm not gonna screw it into the steel, and then we'll know how many hours we put on this axis. All right, these things are pretty easy to set up. It's just a small little electric gauge, I guess, and a wire. You hook this on your machine somewhere, you're gonna clip the wire into this in the back, and the other end of it goes around your spark plug wire. When the engine's running, it's gonna clock your hours. When your engine is off, it's just gonna show the accumulated hours. So let's get this thing fastened on. You run the wire just through the back of the tack or hour meter like that. Then I'm just gonna fasten this. Actually, I'm gonna do it the other way so the wire comes out the side I want it to. Then I'll fasten this to some other zip ties that I already zip tied to the frame. I'll come back later and snip the end of these zip ties off because I don't like the way it looks. But for now, we're just trying to get this on so we can get some splitting in. So now that's fast in there, I'll just run this over to the spark plug wire. Wrap it around that a couple times and I'm gonna throw a zip tie on this just to secure it in place. So just like that, we've got it installed. Now this should start reading hours when the engine's running. 
Let's get this thing fired up and get splitting because once again, we're running out of daylight. All right, so if you want to see if I can get any bundle grade wood out of this thing, you're going to have to wait because I'm going to get this other stuff out of the way first. on the bundles just for that little bit better flame, easier lighting, and I like the smell of the pine. The setup with this axis is a lot different than with a horizontal splitter because you have access to separate your wood as you split and just toss it in the tote. With a horizontal splitter, you pretty much either need an elevator or multiple people. We're working by yourself with a vertical splitter. It's a lot easier to just get it in the correct coats at the beginning. Then you don't have to separate it later, pick it up off the ground, any of that.
you can see it doesn't take long to stack up the wood. Three pine rounds left and then Rachel's going to run with that poplar in the hardwoods. So here, this one's got a couple of knots in it. So I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with it, but we're going to find out. Try to get the uglies off first. Try to turn some beauty out of the beast. I don't think there's beauty in this one. We haven't sharpened this wedge yet. We're going to in the future, but we're going to run it how it is for a little bit first. Come on, show me something pretty in the air. I think we're going to get a piece. <laughs> I don't think we are. I think we are. There it is right there, I see it. Here it comes. Oh, come on. That could go in a bag. That can't. Here we go. That's close. I mean, this isn't bundle grade, but you can put that in the roadside stand. If we tried to shove this through a multi-split, you'd just end up with a ball of who knows what. That could go in the roadside stand. A little bit ugly there. This is going to be a mess. We're getting 
some good campfire wood for ourselves. Aww. I thought I'd be able to carve a piece out of the middle of that, but it's not looking good. Rachel will have a lot better luck with some of the knotty poplar. I thought I was going to get something better than that out of this, though. All right, it's time for Rachel to take over, fill her up with some poplar, and then a little bit of mixed hardwood and call it a night.
she'll have better luck than I do with that pine I messed with. She's got one knottier piece left, but I think she'll be able to carve some nice wood out of this one. I 
they, that'll cut the wrap. That could go in a bag, but I wouldn't call her bundle. I'm trying to get my number right. Together we almost nailed it. Six plus three. These last couple hardwood rounds that we just had here in the wood yard that we're getting cleaned up I'll talk a little bit about how we're going to run this differently than the horizontal splitters so with this axis as you saw you split it and then you're right there to do with it what you want it's not off the end you don't have to walk around the table or anything like that so we just put IBC totes around and we can put them in better placement than they are right now but this was just a quick setup while we're learning the machine so in this tote here that's all that pine and that poplar. That's more bundle grade, gonna go in Megan's bags. Once it gets seasoned, it'll mix in. Over here, we got just the hardwood scraps. That's the stuff that is just nasty, just chunks rotting a little bit. That's all stuff we're gonna burn here at home for heat. Then here, that's where the nicer hardwood goes. That's gonna go in either bundles or uh, roadside stands, sell to customers. And then this tote over here, that's just gonna be backyard campfire wood. That's just a bunch of the uh, pine and poplar, the misfits or the bad split. So and then I've actually got the half of IBC tote there so we can get this cleaned up. I've got the tarp down, so it'll be easier. Just take the rake and the shovel and uh, get that cleaned up. So, oh. If you do end up with pieces like that, you can just throw them straight into there so we don't have to clean them up later, but not a lot of waste. There was some, depending on the wood you're splitting, if bark's peeling off, etc. Definitely cleaner with that single split wedge than the multi-splits or especially the box wedges, but every machine's different, everyone's needs are different. There's no really one machine fits all in firewood. People have different needs, different setups, different strategies, different customer base. But uh, we're lucky enough to have a decent run at trying out different styles, different machines, whether it's a friend's that we borrow, whether it's something we buy, or whether it's something we get to try out and tell you guys what we think. No matter what though, I do like the 
hookaroons and the log tongs to not bend over because the back is what ends up getting me eventually. You can see some of these. I've started to cut my rock a little bit shorter. So some of these are from old trips and some are from newer. It's only an inch or two, but it makes a difference with the new smaller stoves that are out there. We're gonna do some experiment and just like with the bags and the bundles with different sizes of wood and see what works in the smokeless fire pits and all that and with the access, breathe. I always talk and I don't breathe. With the access that allows us to make a more premium firewood like the shorter smaller splits for the solo stoves or the brios or the other ones how many people out there run one of those smokeless stoves we don't have smokeless fire pits i guess not smokeless stove we just have the traditional backyard fire ring and uh not any of the smokeless fire pits so I know a lot of us burn wood, enjoy burning it. Who runs one of the smokeless fire pits and do you like it? And which one do you have? You can pile a decent amount of wood up on this axis with the lift and the table. You can throw some on this side too if you have to. So if you're working alone, take a minute, get it filled up, come split, toss it in the bin that you want. I'm just excited to be cleaning up this wood yard. Contrary to what Rachel oh might my believe. Gosh. She did not value neat and order or cleanliness. I'm getting better. There's always, I like to leave room for improvement because if you do everything well, you've perfect, left a lot. you can't improve. <laughs> Come on. You've left a lot. I learned from others the way we help help. The way we hope others can learn from us, and I've learned that a messy wood yard isn't a good thing. So we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of improving, I just swapped out batteries on the camera. I finally ordered spare batteries. We used to either have to wait and recharge the camera or hook it to a little power pack that would then dangle off the camera. I finally broke down and bought some extra rechargeable batteries, so now we can just take a quick second out, swap the batteries out, and we're back in business. Now these splits are either going to be bundled great or just roadside stand. This is just a roadside stand tote, but uh, we could always hand pick some of the bundle grade wood out of it if we have to. I'm probably going to split this one a little smaller. I'll uh, mix some of that soft wood in with the roadside stands also. I just like to keep them separate when I have like a load of pine or a load of poplar. That way I have a better idea of what my mix is. But sometimes poplar, especially not pine, poplar will just get split right in with the campfire wood. Thank you. 
let it burn it. the hydraulic reservoir so we might have to come up with a solution for that I know Tony from Tony's cool tools he uh, he threw a fan out here on his and a big umbrella yeah it's a hot muggy day once again everybody's dealing with this stuff we had one of the craziest storms the other day here we didn't get hit by the stuff that people in town two three miles away from us but it was for the first time in my life the baseball size hail that you see on the news was right next door. The girl I work with, she had it hit in her pool and it was just, it was a pretty crazy video. But windows shattered on cars, cars destroyed, roofs destroyed. Yes. Rachel's real estate office is pretty much uninhabitable right now because the hail destroyed the roof and now the building the is just is saturated. She went in today to meet clients and she had to meet them at an alternative location. It's a mess. But we lucked out. More storms are coming tomorrow. More coming say. tomorrow. I'll tell you what, we get these new splitters, these commercial rigs. They're a nice unit and for me to get a lot of time on them, I got to come out here by myself sometimes because Rachel enjoys splitting. My daughter Megan is enjoying splitting now. She just finally started to have something to do with it the other day. And now she really likes it. She's gone right now. Her boyfriend and his sister, they were in the uh, Midwest Regional for the softball 12U. They were the state champions. That's not easy to do at 12U, especially in states like Michigan where there's a lot of competitive ball. And uh, they're down. Are they in Ohio? No. Softball? Indiana. Indiana, down in Indiana. On ESPN Plus, so how many 12 girls get to play on ESPN? My daughter at 13, they were one win away from going to the Little League World Series when she was 13. They lost to Ohio. Ooh. The championship. But, uh, they won the state title and then lost to the Midwest region. Iowa a couple years ago, where we would have been out in Washington State watching the play. But that would have been on ESPN also. This one was kind of nasty. A nice thing about doing firewood is all the scraps, the misfits, the miscuts, that's our home heating wood. That's what we heat with all winter, so it doesn't go to waste. And then the uh, non-heating wood, the non-hardwood, that's what we enjoy in our campfires out back. Which we haven't had a campfire in a long time. No, it's been hot, rainy, and muggy. We need to have one. He works me too hard. I'm too tired at the end of the day. Putting in too much work on hard work and man. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, though. We're making progress. All right, three pieces to go, and that's a wrap for this show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We tried to take the beat and turn it into beauty. I thought I was going to do better than I did. Rachel fared pretty well with that hostler. I don't deal with pine a lot, but those knots went deep into that round. I thought I'd be able to split out the center and get something. Don't put your fingers on top. My foot's nowhere near the pedal. Neither was Phil. All you do is talk about Phil. Why don't you he marry him? You cut off. I don't want you to do that. You got pretty hands. She doesn't like when I tell her don't do something, but I don't want to see her get hurt, and I don't think you guys do either.
Now we'll know how long we've been out here for, too. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Is it more fun to watch us run the Axis or our All Wood or 1222, the horizontal ones? Which is, as a viewer, what's more pleasing to the eye? <laughs> um, I have to say I'm super impressed with how nice and neat and perfect these little pieces of wood are. If you have a bundling business uh you need one of these access machines i'm telling you it couldn't be easier to run i can do it so one last thing we just want to tell you we're going to be doing our live stream where you get to interact with heath and i on august 10th 8 p.m uh, details will be coming as to how you can enter into our giveaways that we're going to have during the live stream and one of the items is valued at over 300 dollars. you're not going to want to miss it it's good stuff, guys. I'm telling you. So uh, like, subscribe, <laughs> hit that bell icon so you can be notified as soon as a new Hard Work Man video comes on. So that way you won't miss out on the live stream or the giveaway or what you have to do. So uh, thanks for all your support. We love you. Mwah! Bye.